The advice and opinions expressed by the host of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. The Center for Autism and Related Disorders advises working with a board-certified behavior analyst who has experience with autism before starting any intensive behavioral intervention. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. Good morning and welcome to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod and I'm going to be with you for the next hour talking about autism from a 360 degree perspective. Uh, by the way, this is normally the day for Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy and my good buddy Nancy is not here with us today. So I'm trudging it alone. Uh, but that's okay because Nancy's here with me in spirit. So and we've got a big, big show planned for you uh, here. And I want to remind you right from the jump that this entire hour is meant to be interactive. That we want to hear from you. We want to know your thoughts, your feelings, your questions, and your concerns. Traven's going to show you some of the different ways that you can connect with us. And while he does that, I want to remind you that our homepage is autism-live.com. When you go there, a lot of things to do, right? We're getting closer and closer to the unveiling of the, the toy and gift guide for 2019. But right now, you still have a couple of days to look at 2018's picks to see if there was anything you wanted there. Uh, don't forget that there's a link with each one so that if you want to purchase it, you can link. We And by the way, that's not an affiliate program. We don't get any kickback from it. We just recommended them because we thought they were fabulous. And you're about to get the 2019 any day. It's actually happening on November 1st. It's not a mystery. But in any case, and so many wonderful winners, and we're going to showcase them all here on the show with us uh, throughout the month of November and December. It's going to be great. Um, but let me remind you that our homepage also has other things to do on it. For instance, you can watch the live show. Uh, sometimes it just automatically plays on your server and sometimes it doesn't, but there is a button at the top that says live. You can click it and it will start it playing if we are in fact live. At the bottom of the page, there is a little red button that says chat. If you click on that, it opens up a box. You can type whatever you want to put in there, hit enter, and it shows up here on my screen in that way. You and I can have a conversation, but more importantly, you can have a conversation with whatever expert or guest that we have here in the show. Which brings me to my next point. We do have a lot of experts and guests that come on the show. Please don't be mistaken. I'm not one of them. Uh, I, Nancy and I both are autism moms, very proud autism moms. And uh, we have a passion for making sure that you all get the information that you need. So reach out to us. Tell us what you're looking for. Hey, pitch a story idea or suggest, hey, I want to see somebody who deals with this. We're always interested in that kind of information. I can, I can hear Nancy shaking her head yes. Okay. So uh, on Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy, we always like to start off with something that we refer to as in the news. This is when we go through a couple of uh, news stories that kind of caught our interest this week. So the first one comes to you from Spectrum, which I re highly recommend. Great, great place online that you can go to that has articles that have all to do with stuff happening in our bigger community. Um, there was a really interesting article that was posted the other day there by Daisy Uhas, and it's about cardiac activity and how it may have something to do with autism. So I encourage you to look at the entire article, but it's pretty fascinating, talking about the autonomic nervous system and the parasympathetic sympathetic nervous system and the fact that some individuals um, don't have the ability to calm themselves enough for the system to reset itself so that they're in a heightened state on a regular basis of you know being on edge and extensive studies looking this have, have uh, particularly looked at um, the amount of time between heartbeats and the regularity of the space between heartbeats 
a fascinating little thing. And while they don't see tremendous differences uh, between people who are not on the spectrum and people who are on the spectrum, they did see a very specific difference in the folks that they studied that were on the autism spectrum. That the way their hearts beat and the space between beats is it has like a signature, if you will. Um, so isn't that fascinating to begin with? But they found in other studies, not necessarily looking for autism, that people who have that heart rate, that signature, sometimes tend to be people who ha are symptomatic for autism. So maybe they are not good at um, social situations. Maybe they have anxiety issues that kind of go hand in hand that they perseverate on something. So a very interesting, you know, the, the question is which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Because is the anxiety caused by the heart rate or does the... Uh, is it vice versa? What did I just say? So is it the anxiety that causes the heart rate or the heart rate that causes the anxiety? Isn't that an interesting, for somebody who has a heart arrhythmia, this is very interesting to me. Because I know when my arrhythmia kicks in, it's not fun uh, and can be very anxiety provoking. So uh, fascinating and something that I think we definitely want to hear more about. Very lengthy article, but I encourage you to go to Spectrum and check it out. Um, I personally am taking a copy of this article into my cardiologist and my son's pediatrician because I think that this is important information that we should all have. If your heart's beating a different way, wouldn't you want to let your doctor know? Yeah, I thought so. Anyway, uh, then from the Harvard Gazette, oh, you're going to love this, okay? Uh, Harvard has re received $20 million dollars. It's a gift from philanthropist Lisa Yang and Hock Tan. And apparently they are um, graduates of the year uh, 79. And um, they have given $20 million to the Harvard Medical School, uh, which gives their total autism-related research funding from the two of them to be nearly $70 million dollars. Well, I think we need to get them on the show. What do you think? How fabulous. So this is to create a new center. The center will serve as a hub that brings together the diverse experience uh, and expertise of scientists and clinicians working together throughout Harvard University, Harvard Med Medical School, and the Harvard affiliated hospitals. How much do we love that? Uh, Michael Greenberg, who is the chair of the Department of Neurobiology at Harvard Medical School and the center's inaugural faculty leader says there's an urgent need to understand the fundamental biology of autism. I strongly believe that the multidisciplinary expertise convened by this center will propel us into a new era of autism research, enhancing our understanding of the condition and yielding critical new insights into, into its causes. This generous gift will be transformative for the field. Take us to church, Michael Greenberg. Uh, so absolutely, um, congratulations, Harvard, on, on getting this. And I know that you guys will put it to really good use. And I got to say a big shout out and whoop de doo and thank you so much to Lisa Yang and Hawk Tan. Uh, mental note, let's get them on the show. Um, but how amazing is that? Almost $70 million that they've given for autism research. Pretty spectacular. Okay. So now let's move to some really interesting research. Um, and this is coming to us from Australia. That uh, the, the title here is Eating Disorders and Autism Spectrum Disorder Link Needs More Research, Experts Say. Now, I have had the experience to be in the room with autism experts before and have heard them say that there is a link to anorexia and other eating disorders to autism. I have heard that on many occasions and said, really? I don't, I've never read that anywhere, and I've never heard it anywhere than in a room with experts, but I've heard multiple experts say it when there aren't cameras running, that they're like, oh yes, we know that there is definitely a link there because we see, we see too many cases. So um, there is uh, an organization called the Butterfly Organization um, that deals with anorexia nervosa in um, Australia. 
And they have been looking at this along with a lot of other organizations and that they are seeing that individuals who have anorexia, that it's 20 to 30% of them are individuals who also qualify for an autism spectrum diagnosis. So 20 to 30% of the known anorexia cases are people who qualify for an autism spectrum disorder. Let's think about that for just a moment because that's a pretty high number. Um, and they're also saying that um, it could be that it also presents in other eating disorders that we haven't really noticed because maybe the person is diagnosed with autism and so no one's looking at the fact. And it could be that they are eating too much um, because they can't quite feel full, or it could be that they have a body image issue, but that um, this we might need to be looking at this in boys as well as girls, because when you take into account the, the disparity between the diagnosis between males and females, and we are starting to think of it, of it not just as being that there are more men on the spectrum than women, uh, although I think, you know, it's, it's five to one, um, so that's a pretty significant difference, but we are also seeing that girls are underdiagnosed. So if you put all that into the hopper too and realize that of who, it might be that there's something here. So it, there's, they're calling for some action, action on this and for it to be looked at further. If you have a child that you feel has any kind of an eating disorder, it might be time to bring that up to uh, their physician and have that looked at because we might be seeing the beginning of, of uh, you know, maybe there's a little bit of a connection. It could just be that they're comorbid, but 20 to 30% seems very high to me and to the folks who were doing this study. So um, in any case, we have got a great show for you. Uh, we have had Megan Dolan on the show before. She is the lemur mom. And she's getting ready to do her one-woman show again, Lemur Mom. And she's going to be joining us in just a second. You're not going to want to miss this, so stick with us. Happy Halloween. We're here today to show you some really easy, healthy recipes that you can make for Halloween with your children. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is make this lovely cauliflower brain. And the ingredients that we need for this, we need some sort of a platter. We need a cauliflower and we have an organic cauliflower here. Mm -hmm. Emily, take it away for us. We have some natural guacamole, some organic salsa, some potato chips, and then some pull string licorice. Okay, so those are all the things that we're gonna need. Plus we have a very sharp knife and a spoon. So using the knife and preparing the cauliflower can be something you can do beforehand, before you call the children in, uh, depending on their ages and their skill level. All right, so we're gonna pull the leaves off of this and put the pieces away. You can compost them if you do that sort of thing or just throw them away. You wanna remove all of the green. This part might be fun actually for the kids. It's a difficult one. I'm just gonna slice this part off and pull some more of the green out because there's no green on the brain. But one key thing here is that we wanna slice off just the tip here so that it's gonna sit flat like a brain. And this is the point where the kids can be really helpful. If you have it already measured, um, and that's about a cup and a half of salt, so whatever size platter you're using, and you can have them dump it right on the plate, and that's a pretty enjoyable part of it. Swish it around. Okay, we can put the cauliflower right in the middle of it. And you can see how easy this is. Super duper easy, has big impact if you're doing a Halloween party. But it's also having fun with your veggies, something that we wanna do with the kids. And we can take um, the chips. I'm gonna let you uh, do that with the, the licorice while I throw some chips around the plate. And these, by the way, are organic oven fried no salt chips. You can use whatever you want, but we wanna keep this as healthy as possible. And she's laying those laces around so they look like the veins of the brain. The brain that has gone bad. <laughs> you can see it just takes a couple of minutes and you end up with this lovely, delicious, healthy brain for the children to eat. And it looks good on the table too. Tastes good too, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Awesome. 
Right now, what we're gonna make are hot dog mummies. These are really fun. You can see our finished ones over here. We only need a few things for this. We need some hot dogs. Right now, we're using organic chicken hot dogs that are fully cooked, which is a wonderful thing. We have some mustard. We have some all-natural crescent dough on a plastic sheet that we can roll it out on. We have our rolling pin. I have a little bit of coconut flour, but you can use any kind of flour that you want. This just smells awesome. And we have a sharp knife. So this is the part of the project that we want to be careful around kids. You could use a, a, a duller knife or a plastic knife or do this part yourself uh, when the kids aren't around. But if you uh, open up your refrigerated dough and you roll it out, just throw a little bit of coconut flour onto it so that it doesn't stick as much to the rolling pin and roll it out so that you can't see the lines anymore. Oh, it smells good, doesn't it? I love the smell of coconut flour. And it bakes really a, a wonderful scent, too, into the whole house. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect because the great thing about this recipe is that it's very forgiving. If the dough breaks when you're wrapping up the hot dog, it's okay because the mummy can have lots of different bandages. All right, we're gonna go and just cut through this dough and they can be different width strips, it doesn't really matter. And you really could do this with a plastic knife. I wanna to mention too that if you have dietary considerations and you need something to be gluten free, I did this the other day for my son with a gluten free pizza crust mix and it worked the same. I just had to be really careful. I thought that the key to it all was getting the dough really dry while I was rolling it out and cutting it out and then wetting it before I wrapped it around the dry hot dogs. Okay, so I'm gonna take one hot dog and Emily's gonna take another. And part of the fun of this is that you want to make like a little hat so that there is a place later on to put eyeballs made out of mustard. So you can wrap it around the head, make like a turban for your mummy, you. and then start to, and you see it broke. Doesn't matter because it's a dough and it can be a separate bandage. It's not a problem. You just wrap it around. The kids love this because they know they're gonna get to eat it later on. It's very healthy and a quick dinner that makes it really fun. You just slather it on. And then we're gonna bake it for about 12 to 14 minutes at a 350 degree oven. Let's see, easy, he's got a head. Oh, yours is so much prettier than mine. She's Martha Stewart. Uh, okay, so we're gonna put that into the oven. We don't need to do anything else. And I put it on some parchment paper so that I don't have to use any kind of um, spray or oil or anything and add ingredients. We're gonna stick it into the oven and through magic, <laughs> this is what they look like when they're done. And the other fun element of this is that then you take the mustard and you can give it to the kids for them to put eyes right on and Emily's gonna do that. Awesome. And if you want bloody mummies, you can include ketchup. <laughs> so, those, and, are big eyes. those are big eyes. The other day when I did this with my son, he wanted to put sliced olives on top of the mustard for eyes. But you can see that these are cute, they're tasty, and really healthy. Those are mummy hot dogs. And you can write Happy Halloween in mustard if you're Martha Stewart. <laughs> Very good. All right, we're gonna move on to some spooky spider cupcakes. So what you're gonna wanna do is bake a box of regular brand cupcake, or they have gluten-free, sugar-free options as awesome well. Awesome ones, yes. Which are great. Um, I pre-made these cupcakes standard. Cupcake rules apply. You'll need some eggs and some oil and water. But we've gone ahead and done that already. So what you wanna do is take some chocolate frosting, and we're gonna frost mm -hmm. our cupcake with a thin layer. Doesn't need to be too, too crazy. Ooh. Smells good too. Does smell good. And then we brought some blue sprinkles, and these are naturally colored with uh, vegetable juice, correct? Vegetable juice, blue. Which is fantastic. And so these are blue, and then we're gonna just sprinkle the top of our cupcake here. Awesome. For eyes, I just got some jelly beans here of different colors. You can use M&Ms or whatever you're more comfortable using. And all you wanna do is split your jelly bean in half. So there's your eyeball, Shannon. Awesome. I'll have orange eyes on mine. 
And then you're just going to place them in, in the front of the cupcake. And then for their little scary legs, we've got some Pull and Peel Twizzler here, but they also sell natural candy rope, which you can use as well. So then we're just going to pull off our little legs, and the cupcakes are soft enough where you can actually stick the little leg right into it. And you're just jamming them down? Just jam them in there. All righty. Ooh, look at that leg. And this is a good time to teach your kids about bugs and that they have eight legs. That's a great thing to add to the lesson. And you know, there's lots of different other things too. To get, like I have frosting on my hands and sometimes kids don't like that. It's a flexibility issue. But this is a wonderful way in which to work on those things so that you know, they can take those skills with them later on. If it's at home and it's a little bit of frosting with you, it's a little bit more reinforcing because it tastes good than if they're on the schoolyard and it's mud and things like that. And then once you're done, you have your little eight-legged friend. Mine looks like he needs a haircut, but, <laughs> <laughs> but they're very fun and they taste good and the kids will enjoy working on these. That's right, and they're super cute. They are. And that's Halloween. Healthy and fast and fun. Do you provide care services to someone with autism? Recently, more and more children are being diagnosed with the condition and getting the support they need as awareness grows. But what happens to these children as they grow up? It's estimated that over half a million youth with autism will turn 18 in the next decade, and they'll be faced with a very difficult reality. As children with autism grow up, their services start to disappear or become very difficult to access. Things like medical care, mental health counseling, vocational training, and more. All services that are still desperately needed. The loss of support that youth with autism face as they grow up is so severe that it's referred to in the autism community as falling off a cliff. Adults with autism need the same level of support they had as children to avoid falling off the services cliff. Introducing Skills Living the web-based software designed specifically to help transitioning youth and adults with autism so they can avoid the cliff and instead fly to success. With Skills Living, help your learner with autism develop the skills they need in all the critical areas of adult life, including self-control, planning, and problem solving, effective communication, performing life skill tasks for independent living, acquiring and maintaining employment or other meaningful activities, developing and maintaining social skills and relationships, accessing transportation and public services, and being safe. Skills Living includes a comprehensive assessment, a data collection mobile app, behavior intervention plan builder, and automatic progress reporting. It also provides a complete curriculum addressing 16 key areas spanning the entire range of functioning adulthood. Skills Living is easy to use and can be implemented by schools, parents, and autism service providers. Call or click today for your free demo and see how Skills Living can help your learner with autism avoid the cliff and instead reach their fullest potential. Skills Living. Wish. Learn. Become. Hi guys, welcome back to Smarty. This month, we're gonna be creating our very own any animal mask. As we work on this activity, you'll notice that these icons will pop up. These icons tell you important information about what skills we're using to create this craft and how to find them on skills. Skills is an ABA-based online program that helps parents create individualized programs for their children on the autism spectrum. If you are a skills user, this will make the most out of this artful and educational activity. Well, let's get started. The materials you'll be needing are glue, scissors, hole puncher, markers or crayons, pipe cleaners, and the template. So step one, you're gonna go to our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash autism live and you're gonna print out the templates that you see there. Once your templates are printed out, then you're gonna take your scissors and cut them all out. Now that you're finished cutting out all the templates, you're gonna have several different shapes. This is because this will give you a variety of different features you can use to make different kinds of animals. So this is the fun part. You're gonna take these templates and arrange them into any kind of animal you can think of. Use your imagination. There is no wrong answer. Once you've figured out the animal that you're gonna to want to make, 
Take out your glue and glue them onto the mask. Once that's been finished, then you're going to take your markers and crayons and decorate it, drawing in the features a little bit clearly and just making it as colorful as you'd like it to be. For the owl that I made, I had to cut out some more holes through it. Once your animal mask is done being decorated, you're going to use your hole puncher to make holes on the side so you can fasten it to your face. Then you're going to take your pipe cleaner, just throw them through the holes, and then voila, your mask is ready to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this activity with me. Until next time, guys, craft on. Ooh. Ooh. To find more about skills and to access all of the lessons you saw in today's Smarty, visit skillsforautism.com and click on the parents icon, Skills, the online autism solution. Parent to parent, you might be asking yourself sometimes, why does my child have meltdowns? Well, the difference between tantrums and meltdowns, tantrums, they're a part of typical development, but meltdowns are when things get a little bit more out of control, when even the child isn't sure what's entirely wrong. Generally with a meltdown, there's an environmental component. There's something else going on outside the child that's making the tantrum worse. It's really important that we start to be detectives and take notes and look around at the environment and start to figure out what are the things that happen every time your child has a meltdown. And lastly, it's important to get help. You really can't face these kinds of things effectively completely on your own. Tantrums, they're a part of typical development, but don't accept meltdowns as something that just happens. Make sure you get help and support. You might be asking yourself if your child has autism. You say howdy, we say hi. Let's get rowdy, let's get wild. Let's get, let's get, 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 let's get wild. Hi, welcome back to Autism Live. I'm Lisa Ackerman. Uh, we're here doing allergy-free cooking, and I brought my sister with me today. Jamie Davis, thanks yeah. for having me. A lot of people are asking about a allergy-free breakfast, and breakfast can be full of crap. You it, know, breakfast, and it's full of cereal. crap, and it's hard to do. We yeah. don't have time in the morning. We're in a hurry. We're going completely nut-free. The recipe is not Personality, we can't do yeah, anything can't about. Yeah, can't do anything about that. So we're going to start off first with um, I'm using sorghum and brown rice flour. It, I find the texture good, and I've added some flaxseed meal. We talked about that last time, flaxseed meal for poop. Almost every one of our kids has a poop issue. What's next on the recipe is the quinoa flakes, baking powder, cinnamon, and the xanthan gum. It brings the glutinous texture back into the flour, and often what happens with these recipes is they can fall apart. This one holds up nicely. I like it. For the folks that are egg free, we have a ton of egg replacers. One of those can be the arrowroot starch or bringing back some additional flax seeds. So there's a lot of options to go eggless, but we're going to go egg full in this one. For sweetener, I use the maple syrup. I stay away from refined sugar. What I'm adding now is the coconut um, milk, maple syrup, and a little bit of the coconut oil. And we're going to add in the raisins. Craisins and chocolate chips at the end. To find that chocolate chips can coax people to eat some really amazing things. When we started, Jeff had 42 food allergies, so we had to get creative in how we cooked. So nuts were a big, big issue. What I like now is that he can tolerate so many more things after we start doing this diet. So let me show you how you can deal with this um, sticky stuff here. You get your fingers really wet, and you can push it down. So my oven has been preheated. It's at um, 350 degrees. So we're going to just throw this in. Like I said, I like it around 23 minutes. And the magic oven says, I'm done. Looks like. Don't you love magic oven? Yeah. They're awesome. Here we go. Pops right out. The texture of these, and it's so pretty. It looks almost like a big chocolate chip cookie, but you actually made it healthy. But you can be my wow. guinea pig. Tell me what you think. It looks really good. Doesn't it? So the textures and the colors in there are just beautiful. So the raisins are for you, the chocolate chips are for your kid. I can't believe it's gluten-free. I know, right? It doesn't taste like, you know, crap. crap. 
<laughs> We're wrapping up another cooking show. If you have feedback, you can email us at autismlive at gmail.com. We're, of course, on Facebook. You could go to facebook.com slash autismlive. And, of course, Taka Now has thousands of recipes. Join me there, and we can um, cook some more later on. So thanks for joining us. You say hi, we say hi. Let's get right, let's get right. Let's get right. Welcome back to Autism Live. I'm so excited right now because in the studio for the first time, we've had her on the show before, but for the first time in the studio, Megan Dolan, who is the lemur mom. Hi. And, and then with her, we have Wendy Hammers, who is the director of the show, which I didn't even know that we were having her. I'm so excited that she's here. <laughs> Me too. So uh, I'm very excited to have you ladies here. Uh, what do we want to start with? You've got two shows that yes. are coming up, and we want to make sure people know about right, them. Right. So let's let's get that out of the way and say where it is, where they can get the tickets, and okay. when. Okay. Okay. So it's uh, the next show is Friday, October twenty fifth, and it's at um, a Cal State Northridge in the Little Theater. And all the tickets are available on lemurmom.com. So okay. That makes yeah. it easy. If you remember nothing else um, you're saying, just remember lemur, L-E-M-U-R. Yeah mom.com okay and that'll get you there so you can go then to mm -hmm. the uh friday october 25th eight yes. o'clock see right. some little theater nordoff hall uh but go to lemurmom.com to get tickets but right. then you have another performance that's coming up yes on november 17th at a uh, santa monica playhouse at 7 p.m and that's also available at lemurmom.com but there's very few tickets left there's only about five tickets left there we that go one. that, that one's one. almost sold out you guys we so have if you sold want 99 percent of the shows that she's done it's been amazing i believe it I, I i said i've heard nothing but incredible buzz about your show the last time you were doing it i don't remember what i think i was like out of town you I were think. helping a friend I think. Oh, Very good heavens. Yeah. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> uh, but I knew that there was, there was like something that I absolutely couldn't be there. Right. Like it was immovable. I couldn't do that. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I would have been there. So I'm going to do everything I can to be there on the, the 25th. Okay. Okay. So everybody's like, well, what's the lemur mom? Yeah. I don't know what that is. So start with tell us what, what it is and how it came about. Okay. Okay, so it's lemur mom because we can't all be tiger moms. And <laughs> She's too, too tired to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Who has the time? Right. And it basically came about because when, when my son was diagnosed, when he was five, mm -hmm. and I started going to support groups and seeing doctors, and I just felt like all of the parents I encountered really had it together. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's and I felt like it is. And like well, the first advice I got was get a lawyer. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And so I, I, I have an acting background and I just started writing about these experiences to help myself process them. And the image I came up with was a lemur, like clinging to a branch, big eyed, staring into the dark, <laughs> like don't know what I'm doing, you know, but soft and cuddly and loving. But, <laughs> but right. so that was where that idea kind of came from. So how do you get from that? Because, you know, so you're this wonderful creative person who has this theatrical background, and that's buzzing around in your mm -hmm. head, mm -hmm. right? But there are a lot of people have ideas buzzing around in their head. How right. do you get to, from that to doing a stage show and, and getting Wendy to direct? How did that Great happen? Great question. Okay, so I wrote, I wrote the first piece, and there's a show called Expressing Motherhood. It's a storytelling show, mm -hmm. and so I submitted it to that and then presented it there and it got kind of really good feedback so that kept me going and so I wrote about three more pieces and did them at Expressing Motherhood on another show called um, Listen to Your Mother mm -hmm. and so I had three pieces then and they had all you know been honed and crafted and and had gotten good response and so that was when I went I want to do you know uh, I want to do the whole thing um, so I started the uh, Anne Lamott is a huge um, just inspiration to me and her book. I'm now fan of Lemur. She Mom. has seen oh, me, sure. Lemur Mom, which was amazing. <laughs> um, but so her book, Bird by Bird, says, to, "Is it okay to cuss on the show?" Or no. no. Uh, <laughs> we can always bleep. Okay. She, she says to write um, shitty first drafts. Oh, that's fine. You okay. Can say okay. That okay. So I, that's what I did. I wrote. I just wrote about all of these experiences. I just kind of vomited it out, and then yeah. I had all these pages. And I had these three honed pieces, and then that was when I was like, I need help. And I started looking for a director and got hooked up with Wendy, and she's been key in finding, like, finding the story and the through line, you know, because it can't just be all these experiences. It had to have a, an arc. And it's always so. easiest to get the perspective on what your story is when it's not you. Yes. Meaning, as you said, all this fabulous stuff is swarming around in your head. How do you make sense out of it? So yeah. it's always helpful to have a sounding board. And I just want to say for any creatives that are listening, moms, dads who think, I would like to get in touch with what my story is and what I'm going through with my journey with my children. 
when you say the three separate stories, each piece was five minutes, seven right. minutes. They're not major long pieces, but they're just the kernel of what you want to say is there. And so we connected through uh, the woman who runs Expressing Motherhood, Lindsay Cavett, mm -hmm. introduced us. Wonderful. We started, yeah, she's wonderful, and that show was great. And we started working together, and Megan came and sat down in my office and just read me everything she had. Um, at first, I saw a videotape of her. She had done a TED Talk, oh, TEDx wow. Talk, mm -hmm. and I fell in love with her before I ever met her because she is the trifecta, as I like to say. <laughs> she's a fantastic writer, like funny as all get out. And then she's a seasoned actress. You're very, very modest to say you have an acting background she was with a theater company for a decade mm -hmm. she, she's done a ton of work and but so she's got the, the great writing the great acting and then a story that's compelling that's worth telling because in my business I have to turn down about 90% of the people who come to me who say they want to do a solo show because yeah. a lot of them want to do the hangnail show which is they, have a, they had a hangnail <laughs> they, need, they feel they need to spend an hour telling strangers in the dark theater about it. I'm like no that's not a show right this is a show right and any of your listeners know this kind of wild journey that you never could have expected, that you didn't plan for, that you didn't ask for, suddenly this is your life. And how are you yes. gonna make sense? And this play has a way, in such a funny, heartfelt way, of really you know, delving into, this is what it feels like. No, you're not crazy, but if you're crazy, I'm crazy too. We're all crazy in the yeah. same way, so I guess we're not that crazy. It's like really shows you what it feels like to walk through these, first, these challenges with your children. Absolutely. Uh, well, we should show them because apparently we have a clip. Uh, the clip. Okay. Fantastic. So let's let's go to the clip and then we'll come back and talk. The first thing I do after receiving my five-year-old son's official diagnosis is Google celebrities with Asperger's. <laughs> I just saw Lemur Mom. I just saw Lemur Mom. Lemur Mom. Lemur Mom. Starring Megan Dolan. It was hands down the best way to spend a Saturday night. I'm sure that I'm too helicoptery and I hover over him and I need to teach him independence, but he screams and cries and flaps and growls. I don't know what to do, Mia. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Tell me what to do, Mia. Tell me what to do. I don't know if I'm still laughing or I'm still crying, but I'm definitely still feeling. They say that everybody has a story to tell, but I doubt many people can tell it as well as Megan did. You think I have ADHD? No, I mean, I don't know. The first thing I do is Google celebrities with ADHD. She has the ability to speak her truth, but then it extends out and it makes you feel you can go on the journey with her. I will never be a tiger mom. And that's okay. <laughs> I'm a lemur mom. <laughs> this woman expresses everything I went through with my son. And I don't think it's just for other people who can relate to being a lemur mom. I think it's for all parents. It just gives us hope. An amazing, amazing evening. Thank you. I'm so grateful. I'm so glad I saw it. I'm a new mom, and I'm pretty convinced I may be a lemur mom. And I'm so very inspired. It was brilliant. <laughs> Welcome back. That was the Lemur Mom, and we're here with the Lemur Mom right here, right now, Megan Dolan and the director of the show, Wendy Hammers. And the show is coming back to the L.A. area mm -hmm. Friday, October 25th at 8 p.m. at the CSUN Little Theater, uh, which is north of Hall. And if you want tickets to that, you should get them right now, and that you go to lemurmom.com. You got mm -hmm. it. That's where you yeah. get the tickets. Now, there is another performance, and that's Sunday, November 17th at 7 p.m. at the Santa Monica Playhouse, which is in Santa Monica. And uh, you can also get the tickets for that at lemurmom.com, but it's almost sold out. Yeah. yeah. So, tickets. you know, if you want them, like if you're hesitating even slightly, you're going to lose out. So right. you better with both of them and I expect that the other one will sell out too so you better move and I know everybody cries later on and says well I just like yeah, I wanted to I meant to I was gonna get tickets yeah. no if you want to see it you better move shake a leg right yeah exactly. isn't that what they say yeah, yeah. Uh, okay so um, <laughs> But um, so in terms of the process, I just yeah, want to say yeah. quickly is um, so Megan brought this material and we had to figure out what was the through line. What yes, is what is right. what are we after here? And she just felt like she was ill equipped to be a mama of a child that was on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the show, she realizes, guess what? With all of her wonderfulness and all of her challenges and own insecurities, she is, in fact, the perfect mom for this child as are all of your listeners, the perfect parent, even though a lot of times it probably doesn't feel that way. Yeah. Right. So right. I wanted to make sure, first of all, this is a flat out comedy. I want to say that. Right. Every time I tell people about the show, I go, oh, it's about autism. It's hysterical. They're like, what? 
<laughs> but the fact is that there are a lot of really crazy and funny things that happen, and she has found a way to tell those stories, illustrate them. We use props and costumes. There's a lot of color in the show. There's beautiful projections. There's music. There's a lot going on, and in a way that's not overwhelming, just really uh, a delightful it ride. It enhances yeah. the story. And I yeah. think the best thing you can say about it is we've had a lot of people come to the show who do not have children who are dealing with this, and they're equally moved yeah. because anybody can relate to trying to find your way and trusting yourself and wanting the best right. for your family and just trying to make sense out of who you are as a parent, as a, as a woman, and all of that. Absolutely. So, yeah. Incredible. And so when did you first do the show? What has been well, like the trajectory? So the very the first performance of this whole show was uh, last November. Mm -hmm. I think it was November 17th because we're doing it. Yes. That's yes. right. Yes. Was I on? When was you, I? You were on like right yes, before I think it was going right. to happen. That's so right. Just yes. a little bit more, yes. less than a year. Right. 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 So, okay. Now great. Is, and so now, yes. but weren't you like living in Texas then? No. No. no, 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 no but you Skyped in. I Skyped in. I was in Long Beach. Long Beach. <laughs> which okay. seems like Texas. Which, which seems like Texas. It's almost it was as far. hot like With Texas. traffic at the point right. five, it could take six hours. <laughs> I was totally thinking that you were like in another state. No, no. no. That's. The menopause. <laughs> so, you know, that's, There's so many that's things just, to blame it on. It could be so many yeah, things right, before, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, okay, so well, I'm glad, good for you that you Skyped in from Long Beach because I encourage people to Skype in all the time and they're like, no, yeah. it's so. I wanted different. to come in, so this time I was well, like, yeah. yeah but once you've really... been here once, you'll be like fuzzy slippers next time from Long Beach. <laughs> you know, um, She's wearing them right now. Right, 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 right the exactly. Right. Uh, okay, so now doing it again, like, come on, what's the hope here? Can, like, or, or you want to take it someplace else after oh, here? Well, Okay, so so there are there actually are going to be more shows. Good. There's I'm doing shows at Cal State Long Beach in January, and yeah. they will be on my website soon. The tickets are are on sale, um, and then I'm actually going to Tucson in taking the show in February. Um, Anat Baniel, she uh, she wrote a book. Yes, yes. So I'm forgetting the name of her book right now. Um, but but she so she saw my show. I did it in Northern California, uh -huh. and so she's bringing me in to do it for 150 uh, special needs teachers at her Wonderful. training in Tucson. So that's that's where I really like it to go. I'd like to, for it to be you know it could be at, at things like that, or I'd like to travel with it. Yeah, um, it works yes, really well yes. going into the community. And, and I did some shows at Long Beach City College uh -huh. for a, a class. And the response from these, you know, 19, 20 year olds, everyone had something to say. Like either they, they were on the spectrum, they knew someone. Yeah. This one kid said, he's like, my mom had six kids, two of whom are on the spectrum, and I never stopped to think of what it was like for her. Isn't and he amazing. wanted to bring his mom. It was, so yeah, yeah, and that I wasn't expecting, you know, right. for that, from that generation. So that's exciting to me that it could go to colleges, yeah. you know. And, and so for people who are watching, because a lot of times we have viewers all over the country and really around the world, and they will get angry at me sometimes and go, well, Shannon, you, you, you showed us something, but it's happening in L.A. Right. right and I can't right. get to it in L.A., and what are you doing for me lately? Right. But I like to point out to them that, you know, things can come to where they are if right. they're interested. So and, you and, would and go. If they're I would go. If, right. Yes, that would be if I had someone in a, and it wanted to bring Lee Ramon to their town and they could find a little theater and be go. the producer, absolutely. And it would make yes. a great fundraiser for a school or an organization. Yes. And she's doing one in February yes, next year. Yes, for We Are Brave Together. Yeah. Uh, Wonderful. Just so. Capote's, yes, yes. So. Wonderful. And it's not like it's not a huge set. You can travel no, and, you it's know, it's just a trunk much and, a, and an exercise ball. Do it in a school auditorium. <laughs> Yeah, and I did theater. it when I did it in Northern California. I did not have all of my props. I just did it with the projection. So yeah, it can, it can travel. But sure. in Northern California, this is the name dropper part. Yes. This is when Anne Lamott, the great writer Anne yeah. Lamott, saw the show and she loved it. She sat in the and front row. Yes. Was very and Were you aware of that? Oh yes, yes, I was very aware. Yes, of in that. between yes. hyperventilating and texting, going, yes. "Anne Lamott's here." Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. And she fun. was lovely. And afterwards, we did a Q and A, and she was the first one with her hand uh, up, and she asked me the first question was, "How is your?" Son. Yeah. Well, that was going to be yeah. my next question. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. you know, so where where are you now? So now, so this the the play takes place when he first gets diagnosed, and he's five, uh -huh. and he's now almost ten. Okay. And um, we had uh, two and a half years of ABA, uh -huh. forty hours a week of ABA at That's school. On you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And he just got that support he needed for social social situations. Uh -huh. um, and it, it was just what was key for him. It was like his. His anxiety was greater than his his need to connect. And yeah. to him, it was just like mm -hmm. kids are 
they're loose cannons. Like, I don't want to, any part of it. a lot of, it. of us feel yeah, that. I know, right? <laughs> but he was just like, he made his yeah. decision. And so they gave him support, and he, he connected. He's got three very good friends now. And I'll never forget one day he said, Mommy, it's more fun to do things with friends than by myself. And it's like once so he made sweet. that connection, yeah. you know, there's still situations where it's like if he's going over to his friend's house and another kid is coming over, he's like... What are the rules? Right. Yeah. He's like, I'm not... You know, and it takes... He needs someone to go in there with him and kind of, yeah. you know, it's definitely... And he has the dog. Oh, okay. So part... There's a part in my show where one of the, some of the advice I get is to get a dog, right? Yeah. And we put that off for as long as possible. And we literally just got a dog on Sunday, and wow. he's adjusting to our family. He's a little skittish. And my daughter's having a hard time because the dog has attached to me and follows me around. And my daughter wants, you know, him to follow her around. Yeah. But my son is so sweet. He, like, he like understands. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, the dog wants mommy. Like, I get it. And yeah. he's just happy that he'll give him some kisses, and then he goes on his way. But it's, wow. like, it's almost like he understands. Like, he needs, to, he needs time, you know. <laughs> to, to, it speaks to, to, it speaks to yeah. how empowered he feels that he is now in a position where he can make a decision and say, Mom, listen, I know what, what's going on. Like, he feels, yeah. I don't know, I yeah. think it makes him feel like a grown-up. In right, way, which is really right. To see this little dog yeah. that's right. nervous and, and anxious, and he's like, "Oh, I get that." Yeah, yeah. Doesn't it make you mad when people put out that line that uh, individuals on the spectrum don't have empathy oh, and it's compassion, so, and it's you just want to like, yeah. go, you know, who who wrote that into text somewhere that everybody like decided to spread that around? I yes. want to know what mechanism that was, because let's spread a new rumor, because it's not true. It's not true at all. The opposite about the is true. Compassion and the empathy for the dog. Oh my saying gosh, that the, the dog needs you I mean there's a whole lot in that as yeah. you were saying that's talking about a highly really sensitized child yeah and they're it's and like they have more deeply intuitive really. yeah. you know yes yes but you have other children so do you just have the two yes I just have the two yes okay and how yes. old is your daughter she uh, just turned eight and yes. so how is she because I think that siblings uh, of, of individuals that are on the spectrum grow it to, to be the most incredible people on the face of the mm, planet yeah because they're they tend to be more patient they tend to be more flexible. Mm -hmm. They tend mm -hmm. to be people who seek to help the world make a, a better place. Yes. Uh, but at eight, that's a lot to expect of somebody, right? <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, I would hope right. she's not living up to that no, yet. No, she but how not. is she at eight? Yeah, no, she, she describes herself as having a very tender heart. Aww. And yeah, she's Bless very, very, but it's, it's interesting though too, because because we didn't really realize what was going on my, with my son until he was five. So yeah. she was three. So she was kind of socialized, like watching yeah. him, you know. So sometimes she takes her cues from him. But we realized with her, because in preschool she told us, I don't talk at school. And we were like, well, that's oh. interesting. But for her, her desire to connect was greater yeah. than that fear. And so we knew, like, okay, this is just her kind of following in her brother's footsteps. But she really has a different you know, trajectory. And but, both of the children are portrayed in the play, and they're very yes. different characters. <laughs> yeah. and, and you expensive. portray them? Yes. yes. This is one on the yes. show. Yes. yes. Uh, and so have the kids seen the show? They haven't. There's okay. a lot of profanity in oh. the show. My and kind of show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You're going to love it. Right. I'm excited for you to see it, actually. Right. But, um, but my son knows that I wrote a show about when he wouldn't talk. Uh -huh. That's, and he seems okay with that. I might yeah. need to revisit it if it does, like, yeah. you know, kind of take off or something to to really talk about it but um, it's yeah. a very interesting thing and we often you know we, we have parents on the show and because you had been on before I think I talked about it with you last time I was like is it okay to identify you as you were like right. I'm doing a one more right. show <laughs> yeah, like, she's I'm out not herself. It a secret channel right <laughs> um, but it is a dicey little thing right that we always have to consider like what it is I mean I have a, a conversation with my son almost on a daily basis about is it okay for me to talk about this? Is it not okay for me to talk about this? And because my son is now 16, right. when he was like 14, he said, just remember that I have to live with whatever you say. Okay. And it was like, oh my gosh, oh, I know. So, that's a big responsibility, yeah. kid. And working on solo shows of personal nature like this, this comes up a lot. You yeah. Know, you do have to consider your family. Yeah. And so the question is, are you telling your story? Are you, right. It's really yeah. her perspective. This is what yes. she went through as a mom. Yeah. And yes, of course, it is. But, but there's nothing in the show that is an offensive or in any way saying anything yeah. that would be un uncomfortable for the child. 
It's just she's telling her version. This is this is how I survived these challenges. Right. I got yeah. through it, and this is what it looked like. And I find that we've seen a lot of people who are dealing with this who come to the show, and they're so grateful that they're not alone in it. They go, oh, yeah. you, you're, you were telling my story. It's like, were you hiding in the bedroom and writing down everything I say? <laughs> right. It's just like my life. Yeah. So yes. Amazing. Because it really is my story of navigating, well, yeah. you know, play dates and, and all of these things. <laughs> well, who else's yeah. story could you tell? Right. you got to tell right. your story, right? right? right. Uh, but really remarkable. I, I honestly have heard such great things about it. Thank you. Uh, mm. And that it's hilarious and, hilarious and funny. And obviously, you are two very funny ladies. <laughs> Uh, and so, you know, we didn't really talk about what your background was. We uh -huh. just said that, you know, but you do have a background in theater yeah. and acting. Yes. Um, and you were saying that she was part of a theater company for 10 years. 20 years, 20 actually. Years. The Elephant Theater Company. I was a founding oh. member of the Elephant. Yeah. We have yes. friends in common. Really? Sure. Oh, yes. great. Yes. Um, yes, absolutely. And so how did you get into, because do you specialize in the one-person show? I do. Show? As a director, I do, yeah. In fact, I have not attempted to direct shows that were not, uh, just one actor because well, I that's very interesting. Yeah, well, I, I have in my background I've been a professional stand-up comic for 30 years ah. and I've been an actor since I was a little girl and I uh, Understand the need to take something that's passionate that you're that's boiling inside of you That's brewing and get it out on the page yeah. and on yeah. the stage And so it's fun for me to help midwife these projects that's awesome. uh, But that's the only solo show. I've directed five of them and we one that was just in London and Scotland this summer, a show called The Very British Lesbian. That's oh, so right. hilarious. It's so good. And oh, then cool. Lemur Mom is doing all these performances everywhere. And they're like, my children. I'm like, why? Yes, so fly. I'm so proud of them. Wendy has a phenomenal solo show also called Ripe, which she's just retired because she's working on Yeah, I'm doing it around one, the country, but, but no a, more in L.A. So. Amazing okay. actor and a force on stage. That's well, wonderful. It's incredible. But yes. we, we have a good time. We're working. Yes. But yeah, I have to say, you know, they say if you want a job done, give it to a busy person. Right. <laughs> give it to a busy mom who has a child on the spectrum because yeah. she fast-tracked herself we developed and put the show together block staged it and put it on its feet and got it in front of an audience in <laughs> literally five months which wow. is unheard of usually at least in a year in that process. Well, but I had the, I mean, I had the bulk of it written but I know, we had but to she, I'm shape you, it down yeah for, she, for someone who is as busy as she is she was more organized and more on top of it because she knew she had to be because it, when the school bell rings that part of her life is over and then she goes back to the mom hat yeah and so you know you have to well we should say that I mean you continue to be a mom yes. you're like yeah. very involved yeah. it's not like yes. you know that that goes oh, away right. no. right. yeah, um, you know. how is that balancing being <laughs> it's a great question writing I don't performing. know that there is a balance I struggle yeah. with that when I'm really in a run of a show because I did it at the White Fire Theater right. um, in the spring every Sunday for six weeks and Sunday mornings I would wake up and it was like Christmas. I was so excited to go oh. and do the show, you know, and it's this incredible experience. And yeah. then I don't sleep the night, you know, uh, that night because I'm so, yeah. so much adrenaline. And then to wake up the next Monday day morning. and have, nobody cares that I do the show, <laughs> no. you know, and it's really <laughs> kind of need to be made. Our cool to no, you. no, no. <laughs> so it is, I'm right. learning how to navigate that, right. you know, to kind of have to get my 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 sea legs back and jump back into the but mom life, but I don't I don't have any answers for that. Really, <laughs> we were talking about this but, before before we came on here. Uh, but I do believe she's a better artist because she's a mom, and she's a better yes. mom because she's an artist yes, doing yes. her work. We're, doing this has made me realize, like, oh, this is what I do. Like, this is what yeah. I'm supposed to do on the planet, you know. Yeah. So I got to find a way to work it in, and really really working on letting go of the guilt because it is good for them to see me yes. happy and fulfilled and yes. working hard yes. at something I love you and, know and being passionate right. about that work because right. I think I too often our That's kids now thing. see people working right um, and they need to see people being passionate about their yeah, work. Right. We all need to be doing that. That's for yeah. sure. I have a 24-year-old son. Ah. So in addition to being a director and an actor, I'm definitely a mom. And I feel like that is my legacy, that I encourage him through him seeing me be creative, expressive in my ah. life, that he is going for things that he loves. And that, that's, that's, that's a good message, I think. What does your son say about what he wants to be when he grows up right That's now? It's a great question. It's, it was an inventor. Okay. And then he wanted to be a YouTuber. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, I need to check in with him again. But yeah. he really loves, um, he loves science. He loves math. Oh, he loves to read. Mm -hmm. um, That's yeah, awesome. But yes. He likes really? video games. We have to limit it because he gets very, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Into yeah. those. That's called being a boy on the planet. <laughs> right.
right? right, right. And uh, what about your daughter? We don't want to leave her oh, out. Oh, she, she wants want to be? be a writer, singer, performer. Oh. She writes songs. She was in The Lion King this summer. Oh. Yes, she's um, all about yeah, <laughs> So when do you think you'll let them see the show? That's like, a great question. Um, <laughs> my, really I had a, a, very, a very good friend say, because I was kind of talking to her about it, I'm like, is it okay that I wrote yeah. this? Because I felt so compelled to write it. Yeah. And she said, I think it's the type of thing that when he's like 20, you yeah. could sit down with him and watch it, and he would get it, you know? Uh -huh. But I don't feel like I want him to see it now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, Just almost, almost because, like, I don't know that he wants to see me like that. You know, right. I've thrown myself under the bus, and I, like, let it all out. Yeah. And I, yeah. I don't know how, yes. That may yeah. not be his business right now. Right, right. right. Or helpful or useful to him right, right now. But when I think I, once he gets to a certain age, he'll be able to maybe look back yeah. and go, oh, well, that was... Well, so probably tough for me. Yeah, right. <laughs> also, look, right. she plays right. him, and I play my son in my show, and it's the uh, same thing. Yeah. You, you know, but it was many, many years before Griffin saw my work. And it is it is a little odd for them, but they, yeah. when they're ready, they, you know, then they, when, they're, when they're young adults, that's the time where they and can And I don't it. think I would be, like, I would, don't think I would invade his teenage years and be, you right. know, throwing those up on stage. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. feel right to me, but... Although I think I do that here sometimes to my son. I just say that. I'm like, oh, maybe I'm doing that. Uh, I try to clear things. With I him do portray my husband, and he, oh my God. he got hilarious. <laughs> well, and so I, I, di I didn't want to ask, but so, you, so you, you're, you're still married, because a lot of times people aren't, <laughs> I know. right? Yeah. Um, I am still but married. So, and, and he's got so, a great so, husband. He's and, a sweetheart. And he so he's a support. That's yeah. part of why you can have the yeah. time to be and, able to go and... And my in-laws are amazing. Oh, they live wonderful. a mile and a half from us. The kids go to their house all the time, and that Wonderful. is that, that's a big reason that I can do this as well. But well, the dynamic yeah. of the relationship between a couple when they're raising a child that's going through this is difficult, funny, oh, yeah. challenging, sometimes sexy, sometimes exhausted. It's everything, yeah. Yeah. and she, it's all in the play, and it's so funny. <laughs> Wonderful. Really. Well, I, you know, I, I'm I'm still happily married as an autism parent too, but we make jokes all the time about how someday, because the statistics often yes. are quoted, yeah. Um, and and we see it a lot in the community. Although, you know, there's a new study that says that it's either people get divorced or they go closer together. Okay. But we always joke that someday we're going to come home and there'll be a divorce decree on our door <laughs> because it will just be a Assumed. Like, Someone will deliver it to you. We issued it for you. <laughs> and, you had nothing uh, to do with it just at the time. Just by yeah. time. Yeah. We found out that yeah. you've been married this long and you have a child on the spectrum, so we went ahead and issued it for you. Uh, no need to file anything, right? Because, the, you know, so I didn't want to assume, but I'm so glad yeah. to hear that you yes. have that support. Yes. But I agree yeah. about the these kind of crisis that things in life either completely destroy or bring people together. Right. Yeah, that's true. Right. Very right. much true. Well, good to see that you have not only survived, thrived, <laughs> yes. and have been able to take your experience and make it something that other people can have a place to emotionally experience what they're going yes. through in a way that's helpful to them. What a great it's, thing to do. You know what? It is so rewarding. There's just nothing else I'd rather do. And and it's I've had some audiences filled with, you know, special needs parents that totally get it. Yeah. And in those audiences, the laughs come so hard and so fast and furious. And it's funny because other people that aren't in this situation have told me afterwards, they're like, I wasn't sure it was okay to laugh, you know? <laughs> but if you lived it, you get it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes. So let's say again, so there's two performances. And coming up, yeah. But uh, yeah. coming up immediately. Right. But then right. you'll keep us posted on when there's yes. more. So Friday, October 25th. Uh, at 8 p.m. at CSUN, the Little Theater at Nordoff Hall. That's Friday, October 25th. Then there's Sunday, November 17th at 7 p.m. at Santa Monica Playhouse. That's in Santa Monica. You should go to lemurmom.com to get yes. tickets. Please know that there's only a handful of tickets for Santa Monica, uh, for Santa Monica Playhouse on the 17th. And the show so, on the 25th and, sounds far away, but it's not. Isn't it like a week from Friday? Yes. Oh, it's, it's, like, super, it's around in the corner. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wait, it's, so yeah, it's, is it a week from Friday? That's right. It's a week from Friday. Yes. Actually, it's a week from today. Right. A week from today. A week from today. Good. So, um, you and need to get your tickets now because it's going to sell out. And don't come crying to me when it's sold out <laughs> and you couldn't get tickets. Um, yes, I know them, but I can't get you tickets. There's only a limited number of seats, so, you and know. And for people in the South Bay, there are um, shows coming up in January at Cal State Long Beach. Uh, so look at my website. They'll be up there soon. And for people who are very far away that are listening or uh -huh. watching, 
if we want leave a mom in your neighborhood it's possible right. okay. just go to your organization your community your school and then and then contact us through the website leanmom.com and we yeah. can figure out how to yeah. make that happen create an event I mean you know people are always looking for uh, fundraising ideas yes. perfect for yes. that and will write to us so you, you what you do is you go okay I'm gonna do a fundraiser you have them come do the fundraiser with yeah, you it's a parents night out Right. Or, or a ladies' night, however you want to do it, and people have a great time and raise money. Yeah, and, and last, money. you're took us yeah. off. Exactly. Right? Yes. There exactly. we go. Yes. Okay, well, thank you, ladies, so much for being thank here. Thank you, Shannon. We're out of time, um, but I am supposed to read. Yes, no, I, I, I never have my paper in the right place. Uh, so on Monday, we have Bonnie Yates, special education attorney. We have Heather Lane from Fullerton Cares. She's going to be talking with us about the comedy show that they have coming up for Fullerton Cares. So we're excited about that. On Tuesday, we have a best of. On Wednesday, we are told that Dr. Doreen Grampiche will be here to answer your questions live on Wednesday. So you won't want to miss that. On Thursday, we have autism expert Madeline Aguera. And then on Friday, we have yet another guest who's going to be joining us from Fullerton Cares because we're going to have some of the comedians. I, uh, this is what I, has been rumored. Although I have not yet heard uh, that we have the, their big headliner. So, but well, I'll keep you posted on that. So in any case, uh, we're so thrilled that you guys are here with us. We'll be back on Monday. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now.